Hey, I wanted to do a quick revisit of the Quinn LED ESP8266 PWM Wi-Fi based dimmer. That's a whole mouthful. So I want to do a quick explanation on what it, what the project is, uh, how it works, what I'm going to use it for. And in the last section, I want to show you basically all the revisions I went through to get to the current revision. In separate videos, we will actually solder a board and I'll show you all the components you need to do that. Then we'll program the microcontroller connected to Demotics, a Demotica system to centrally control all the units. And after that, you have a remotely controllable lighting solution. So what is it? Well, or why did I make it in the first place? Well, I was looking for a dimmer to use in the new house I'm currently building. More about the new house can be found in the series below. I'll link it in the description. And um, since I like LED lighting, I was looking for a dimmer for LED lighting. And I wanted to dim most, or if, if not all, the lights I want to make in the house. So I looked up how these technique worked and basically I needed a DC dimmer. Now there's multiple ways to do this, but a popular uh, way to do this right now is using PWM. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. And what that means is normally current and amperage are basically a flat line. But using PWM, you introduce, introduce pulses like that. And by varying the width of these pulses, like if you wish to dim the light uh, very low, you'd make very short peaks. Or if you want to raise the intensity of the light, you'd make larger peaks. By doing that, uh, basically the light flickers, but by doing this really fast, which shouldn't be visible to the human eye, you can dim the lights uh, in a very efficient way. Now, commercial dimmers that do this exist, but those often cost 70, 80, up to 100 euros for remote controlled Z-Wave versions. And they didn't always have all the features I wanted even. So I started looking into doing this myself. And in, I think in November of 2014, so one and a half years ago, um, the ESP8266 got introduced. It's a... Uh, well, you could, probably can't see it, but I'll show you in more detail later on. It's this little microcontroller with Wi-Fi built in. It had several GPIO pins, which could pulse PWM at a thousand hertz. So that's a lot higher than the hundred or two hundred hertz commercial dimmers we're using. And that rate should be invisible to the human eye. If I look at the light in any dim state, it just looks like a solid light and it doesn't flicker, not even in the corners of my eye. Um, so yeah, so basically what my board does, it's a little PCB with an ESP8266 on it and two MOSFETs to pulse the outputs and that way we can dim the lights. So pulse width modulation allows you to dim your lights, but what, what kind of lights can you dim? Well, I use um, LED bars like this one myself. Or you can use LED strips, or you can use LED downlights. Basically, any LED product which uses direct DC, uh, you can dim. And uh, Queen LED supports, uh, well, I guess 12 or 24 or 36 volts. So it's, it's you can use a variable voltage input, it shouldn't matter. But more about that in the later section. And uh, I'm currently building the house and I will be creating LED walls with several of these boards and power supplies and stuff like that. You can check out um, my collaboration project with Mux on creating or on testing uh, Chinese power supplies versus meanwhile power supplies in the, again, in the description below. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So if you like this video and you're interested in maybe building these boards yourself, it's really easy. And as I said, next videos that are coming up will be sort of tutorial videos on how to do this yourself. 
what kind of equipment to get, uh, what kind of components to get, how to solder it all together, connect it to the modics, everything. So uh, I hope you like and subscribe to this video and let's take a look at how I went from basically this uh, dingy looking prototype <laughs> right to this new type of board which is nice and compact and solid and yeah can handle a lot of current so let's take a look so the first prototype i uh, made i can't really show because it was made on a breadboard using an arduino and an external wi-fi chip and uh well it was a giant mess but it worked uh, but it wasn't really a viable project for me for the long term. Then, uh, late, uh, I think it was November 2014, um, the ESP8266 got introduced and, well, it quickly became very popular. And that led me to create this. This is my first, uh, well, as you can see, prototype board. So it's beyond the breadboard stage. Um, but it's basically a, a little board with holes in it. And uh, you put on all the components and then you solder either the lanes or wires the way you want to have it. And well, yeah, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, but it worked. So what you see here is the 8266. This is a microcontroller and a Wi-Fi chip in one. So that's basically what enables this project to be the price it is. Then the board below it is a voltage converter because I input and output 12 volts, but the ESP needs 3.3 volts. So that's why we need a voltage converter. And then here you see two MOSFETs and the MOSFETs uh, do the switching or actually the ESP8266 does the switching at a thousand hertz, which I mentioned before. And then the MOSFETs uh, amplify this to the 12 volt signal that goes to your LED strip or your LED downlight. So yeah, version one was a bit rough, but it worked. It was awesome. So, oh, I guess we should call that version 0 0.1 because this is version one. Version 1 is basically based on the same principle, um, but then transposed onto a PCB. And as you can see, we still have the voltage converter. We have a socket now for the ESP01. Uh, so if I take one, you can just put it in there. And there we go. Now it has a microcontroller, which does the, all the actions that need to be done. So while that was awesome and it worked, um, the back doesn't really have anything on it. This was my first try at designing a PCB. Version two quickly followed, which was this one. And this one, the, the previous board was five centimeters by five centimeters. This one is 2.4 centimeters by uh, five centimeters. So it's basically less than half the size and still has the same functionality. I found a much smaller voltage converter, which enabled this. And I moved the MOSFETs closer together. Again, we keep the socket in which we can put the ESP8266, like that. And now we have a very compact little board. And the reason why I wanted to do this, and this is version two, by the way, is I wanted to be able to put it into wall sockets if I needed to. And while this worked pretty good, there was some stuff I wanted to change and make it a little bit different. So after a while, version three was born. Oh, version three is even smaller than version two. Um, and I was inspired by a friend of mine who said, yeah, you shouldn't use these through hole components. You should use uh, surface mount components. They're a lot better. Well, so <laughs> I made this board. As you can see, it's the tiniest board I've made. And on the back, you can see there's two surface, found, surface mount MOSFETs. I don't know if you can read the text. But, uh, 
there we go. And I, I started to learn. I put my website on address on there. I actually put the wrong address on there, but fix that. And there's some descriptions uh, about GPIO pins and other stuff on there. So, and while this worked, um, I didn't really like the service mount MOSFETs because I wanted to uh, put more power through them than the surface mounts could dissipate without uh, special heat sinks and other kinds of crap. So I went back to version two and I designed version 2.5. And version 2.5 has some differences in it in that uh, the MOSFETs are placed differently as you can see. And that should allow for a bit better heat dissipation but it also allowed me to uh, change the way the tracks are laid on the PCB. And basically the copper in this version is about six times as much as in version two. So it should be able to handle six amp per channel or eight amps or maybe even 10 in total without additional special cooling. But there were some issues with it. As you can see, the ESP is on here and it's basically touching the uh, MOSFET. So that wasn't good. And I also didn't include resistors because for a long time I didn't really understand the use of them or how they worked. And while the their use is limited in this application, um, there is something to say for it. So in the end, and that's where we end up today, I made version 2.5 revision, what was it? 1.12. Not sure you can read that, but hope you can. Uh, revision 1.12 uh, still has the thicker lanes and uh, improved layout. And it solves the uh, ESP issue. There's some other slight issues with it, so I might make a new version in the future. But up till now, this is doing pretty well. And in the next video, we're going to solder one of these. And uh, yeah, you can go through the process of what you need to get and how to create one. Of course, sometimes there's errors you don't expect. I'm actually going to need these boards for a tutorial I'm going to do or a workshop in a week or so on CampZone, more about CampZone in different videos. Um, but the board house screwed up and forgot to put the silk, silk screen on the top, as you can see here. Not a problem for me, but during a tutorial, that's well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> so yeah, that is Quinn LED. So from this guy, it went to this guy. Then it became a lot smaller. We dabbled around with SMD. This was again back to the original form factor of version 2. And now we have 2.5. And that's basically it. That's the history of Queen LED. And I'm sure it's not done yet. As I said, I'm making these to go in my house. There'll be about 10 or 15 running in my house, I think. And uh, yeah, I really wonder how that will go. <laughs> so I hope you liked this video of a bit of a history lesson. And um, please like and subscribe for future updates. As I said, I'm doing new tutorials with videos in which you can see uh, how to solder it, how to program it, basically everything until you have a working project. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks, guys.